Let's try another example. Let's do the probability that z is less than negative 1.84. So let's draw this one out. We got zero in the middle. We got negative 1.84, which is to the left of zero. The probability that z is less than negative 1.84. So we're looking for this area over here. Now, a couple of issues that I want to talk about with this specific question. This one's unique because it's a negative number. Depending on the stats course you're taking, depending on your prof, they may allow you to use a z-table that has negative z-scores as well on top of these positive ones. So there's actually two z-tables. There's one for positive z-scores and there's one for negative z-scores. They work exactly the same way. They just give you the area to the left of that z-score. It's just you can input negative number or look up negative numbers as well. But a lot of times, certain stats courses, the prof only allows you to use a table with positive z-scores, right? So if you're allowed to use a negative z-score table, then this is pretty easy because you would just look up the column that has negative 1.8. So you would look up the column with negative 1.8 and you'd be looking for four as the second decimal place, which would be here. And if you looked up that row and that column, you would end up getting 0 0.0329, right? That would be in, uh, that would be negative 1.84, right? If you look up the negative Z table. And so that would just be the answer right? That would be to the left, right? They're asking us to the left of that, 0 0.0329. That's what the answer would be. However, what if you don't have a negative z-table? What if you're not allowed to use one, right? So you could only use this. Then it's more tricky because then you have to, you have to find an equivalent expression that uses a positive z-score. So notice that if we do use a positive z-score, so negative 1.84, we got 1.84 over here. Notice the probability that z is less than negative 1.84 is the same as the probability that z is greater than 1.84, right? Both of these are gonna give you the exact same area, the exact same probability, right? Because of the symmetry. Problem with this, like the example we did before, notice that this area here is to the right of a z-score, but the table only gives us the area to the left of a z-score. So we have to rewrite this as one minus the probability that z is less than 1.84. Right, so hopefully now you're seeing why that first video is important, right? Getting that symmetry down, because you have to create expressions, equivalent expressions in a certain way where, you, where you're dealing with a positive z-score and you're dealing with the probability that z is less than a certain z-score in order to use this table properly, right? So it could get a little bit tricky. Hopefully that made sense, what I just uh, said there. Basically, um, let me make a general sort of rule here. Whenever you have the probability that z is less than a negative number, let's call it just negative a, you can always rewrite that as one minus the probability that z is less than the positive, the corresponding positive a value, right? So notice this here is that, probability that z is less than negative a, probability that z is less than negative 1.84, that's gonna equal one minus the probability that z is less than the positive a. So one minus probability that z is less than 1.84. So that a can be anything. It doesn't have to be negative 1.84. It could be like negative one, right? Probability that z is less than negative one is the same as one minus the probability that z is less than positive one, right? And now from here, we can use the table because one, this we could get from the table, the probability that z is less than a certain z score we got 1.8 and then the second decimal place is four. So 0 0.9671. And when you do that, you end up getting 0 0.0329, which is the exact same number that I got before if you're allowed to use the negative Z table. If you look up negative 1.84, you would end up getting that number right away. Now, what if you were to do the same question, but using the calculator? 
So again, we're finding this probability that Z is less than negative 1.84. You go through the exact same sequence. We're still using a normal distribution. Notice the lower bound is going to be here, right? It's going to be like negative infinity, but you could just use negative 10. So I'll put negative 10 here. Upper bound is going to be negative 1.84. Right? So the lower bound is always the number to the left of the area you're looking at. The upper bound is always the number to the right of the area you're looking at. And then standard deviation is still 1, and uh, the mean is 0. And when you input this, you would end up getting that number right there. I think it will be like 0 0.03288, but it rounds to 0 0.0329. So you'll end up getting the exact same thing. Again, it's nice with the calculator because you don't have to rearrange stuff like you do with the table. If you're just using a positive uh, Z-score table, you get that answer right away. And actually, if you want to see the symmetry at work with the calculator, you can find this as well. So if we put the lower bound as positive 1.84, right? The number to the left and the upper bound is going to be like 10, right? So switch these up and you execute that you would end up getting 0 0.0329 as well, right? Because both of these are the exact same thing because of the symmetry, right? So that's how you deal with a potential negative Z value. Uh, the calculator is easy, but again, if you're only using a Z table with, um, with positive Z scores, then it's a little tricky. You got to rearrange it, get an equivalent expression. And let's do one final example for this video. Let's find the probability that Z is between negative 1.12 and 1.83. So if we draw this out, because you're in the middle, 1.83 is over here, and then negative 1.12 is over here. So we're finding this area right there. So how can we rewrite this in a way where we could use this table over here? Now, if you ever get the probability that Z is between two numbers, let's say Z is between A and B, you want to rewrite that as the probability that Z is less than B minus the probability that Z is less than A. Right, that's always going to work. Why is that? Because notice in this case, the A is like negative 1.12, the B is 1.83. So we can rewrite the probability that Z is less than B, so the probability that Z is less than 1.83, which is all of this probability from 1.83 all the way to negative infinity. So all of that area, and then we have to subtract this area over here, the, um, all of the area to the left of negative 1.12 to get that remaining area in the middle, right? So that's like that minus probability that Z is less than A. So this probability that Z is less than negative 1.12, right? So when you get something like this, you always want to split it up into these two expressions, right? So you may want to write out this expression here. This may not be as clear. So this is Z is less than B, right? Hopefully you see that, and that Z is less than A. So here, probably that Z is less than 1.83. Notice that that's a positive Z score, and it's asking us for the area to the left of that. So we could use the table right away. So 1.83, where is that going to be? We got 1.8 and 3, so we got 0.9664. So this here... It's 0.9664. Now, what about the probability that Z is less than negative 1.12? That one is a little bit more tricky. That's like the example we did before. So the probability that Z is less than negative 1.12, right? So that's this area over here. Maybe shade it in like in a darker way. That's going to be the exact same as the probability that Z is greater than positive 1.12, right? That would be the same if we had 1.12 here. That would be the same as the area to the right of that. And that is 1 minus the probability that Z is less than 1.12. Like that. 
right? So a little tricky, a lot of manipulation going on over here. So one more time, we're finding this probability that z is less than negative 1.12, this over here. And to find that, we got to use these steps that we used in the previous example when we dealt with a negative z value. So we got to change it to the probability that z is greater than 1.12, uh, and then change it to 1 minus the probability that z is less than 1.12. And you don't even have to write this middle step. As I mentioned, remember when I gave that general formula, I had the probability that z is less than negative a is the same as 1 minus the probability that z is less than that positive a value. So you could just use that formula there. And then over here, this, we could use the z table. 1.12, we got 1.1, we got 2.8686. And when you do that calculation, you end up getting 0.1314. So remember, that's the probability that z is less than negative 1.2. That's this circled area here. Now, this goes here. So the reason, again, we have to do all this manipulation is so we can use the positive z-score table. Now, hopefully, your prof and your stat scores, they allow you to use the negative z-scores as well in the table. And then you could just look up this in the table and you would get that number right away. But if you can't, if you have to use the positive z-score table, that's all you're going to have on the midterm or the exam, then you got to do it this way. You got to find that equivalent expression using symmetry. So this, I found out over here on the side, got that 0.1314 and I subbed it in there. And so now we could just subtract these. And when you do that, you end up getting 0 0.8 three, uh, eight, three, five, sorry. So that is the answer. That is basically, if I circle the area, that's that area right there. Okay, so that's how you use the table to get that. Okay, now what if we were to use the calculator? It's gonna be a lot easier. Basically the lower bound is this negative 1.12, right? The number to the left, the number to the right, 1.83. That's the upper bound, standard deviation one, mean is zero. If you execute that, you should get that number right away, straight away. You don't even have to do any sort of manipulation. All right, so two different ways, using the table, using the stats calculator to find the area under the curve for specific z-scores, whether to the left of a z-score, to the right of a z-score, or even between z-scores, multiple examples that I just did.